Happy Wednesday class. Today we're going to finish Ada's violin for this week's interactive read aloud. In, the, in time, the screeches, twangs, and tweets hit all the right notes. Their class became a small island where Chavez taught them to respect themselves and one another. Be kind. Always say please and thank you. Say you're sorry. Be dedicated when you commit to something, Senor Chavez told the children. Soon, the ragtag crew of kids learned to tune in to one another to band together. The recycled orchestra was born. From then on, there was something new in the air in Cantera. Gancheros trudging home from the landfill might lift their heads to hear the sounds of Ada's violin, or the strains of Bebe's cello, or the strum of Noelia's guitar. A symphony of sound helped to lift them beyond the heat, the stench, and their aching backs. With her violin, Ada could close her eyes and imagine a different life. She could soar on the high, bright, bittersweet notes to a faraway place. She could be who she was meant to be. As Ada's skill grew, so did her confidence. Once timid, she now took center stage playing solos. She helped teach the younger children, too. Her teachers and fellow students took note. When she was 12 years old, Ada was named a first violinist. Imagine, she was first at something. Shortly after, she and her 39 fellow musicians were invited to perform concerts in Catera and later in the nearby capital city of Asuncion. Word of this extraordinary orchestra spread. Soon they were asked to perform in other cities and even other countries. Ada and her friends flew on their first airplane, stayed in their first hotel, swam in the bright blue waters of Rio de Janeiro, sampled their first pastries and pineapple, and saw sights they never imagined. The world dazzled them, just as they dazzled the world. When Ada was 16, the orchestra received a very special invitation. They were asked to tour with a world-famous rock band. More than 35,000 people awaited them at their first concert stop in Bogota, Colombia. Ada was more than nervous. She didn't know how to enter or how to greet the audience. She went blank. She saw a giant stage with glaring lights and heard people screaming. And just a reminder, Bogota, Colombia, that's where I lived for a few years. <clears throat> but she didn't have to worry. As the recycled orchestra took the stage, the people who had paid to see the rock band cheered for them. The enormous audience sang and swayed to the music as the orchestra played. And as their performance came to a close, a crescendo of cheers, chants, and applause resounded across the park. The astonished kids bowed, grinning at one another. They discovered the surprise waiting in the landfill. Buried in the trash was music. Do you guys remember the foreshadowing when Ada was at the landfill? Buried in the trash was music. That was the foreshadowing that statement was predicting um, at the beginning of the book. And buried in themselves was something to be proud of. And I wanted to show you guys an actual picture of the band. It says, music allowed us to connect with other people. Without even speaking the language, we understand each other. Fabio Chavez, and of course, that's the music teacher. And here are all the students, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a more close-up look.
Okay. And just some background too, I'll just read this very, very first paragraph. If you remember on the first day of our interactive read aloud, I asked you guys to research a little bit about where they are from in Katera. I'm just going to read this first paragraph here. It says, author's note, the world sends us garbage, we send back music. Fabio Chavez, again, that's the, that's the teacher, the music teacher. Ada Rios' town, Katera, is the main garbage dump for the capital of Asuncion, uh, Paraguay. It is one of the poorest slums in all of South America. More than 2,500 families, 25,000 people, excuse me, 20,000 people, live there on less than $2 a day. They endure 14-hour days picking through the trash in the landfill to find things they can recycle and sell. Officially, children aren't allowed to work in the landfill, but that doesn't stop them. Some of the families need their help. Whoever can carry something can work, said Ada. And there's a little bit more there that uh, we don't really have time for. But anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this book. I thought it was very um, well written, very well il illustrated, and also very inspirational to think about all the obstacles that Ada and her band had to overcome. They certainly showed a growth mindset throughout the entire book. Again, today's question, what is the writer's message in this book? Please respond, and I'll see you guys back tomorrow for our last interactive read aloud of the week.